everybody hope you're doing well welcome back to another video this is the next day after the previous reading vlog i uploaded uh caledonia wrote um and i'm still on my hunt for a five star read and i am just getting annoyed so uh, this is the second installment in the reading until i find the five star read series hopefully it's just a duology but <laughs> We shall see. Um, anyway, I am going to start because I'm just going to go for a little bit of a walk today. My knee's really hurting, like it's like locked and it keeps on like really like painful when I move it and like bend it and stuff. So I don't know how long it will be. I don't know how comfortable it will be, but we shall just see. But I'm going to start day, more days in the Morisei Bookshop by Satoshi Ogasawa, translated by Eric Ozawa. Um, I read the first one last year and I really, really enjoyed it. I think I gave it 4.75 stars. Um, I just love the feeling and like the setting and the way that the woman is like getting in love with books. I saw myself seeing herself in books and um, it was just really like calming. I just really loved like the way it was written and everything it was like very just like a nice pleasant read. So I'm really hoping for the same and maybe go a little bit better. Maybe get the five. It'll be good if we can do it on the first one. But um, I'm going to read a bit of this whilst I go out and I shall see you soon for an update or just some nature footage. sat down I'm like right in the sun um but it's not too bad I think I might see if I can read a bit um and um hopefully I enjoy it it's like a lot of bugs around but um just trying to get in the zone I don't know if I'm going to be able to read that much because usually I get a bit stressed when I'm out like reading so I don't know why but I got to page 16, two chapters. It seemed like I was reading for a lot longer, but I don't actually know how long it was. But I think I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk now because I'm just getting quite hot here. And like, there's all like flies and things. But uh, the story is again following Takako and she is like working, I think an office job now, but um, she still comes to the Morisaki bookshop to see her uncle Satoru and his wife Momoko. And, um, it's sort of about how like there's less customers come in like every time and most of the customer base is elderly like gentlemen so you know there's not going to be that much you know in the future um and just like i guess it's going to battle with how the store is going to you know survive um and just about yeah the customers and like the different types they get and who they are and things and yeah I just love like the good being back in this world and being transported to Jimbocho, um, this like book neighborhood of Tokyo, which just sounds really, really cute. And I'd love to go there. So yeah, you're enjoying it so far. Uh, let's have a little bit more. This is the way I need to go. I'm just a bit scared about my knee. Um, I'll put you on, hope I can do it. Wait, if I just go slow, slow and steady wins the race. Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't know what is up with my knee. I just woke up like four days ago. It's just been like really painful, like moving it. And it's just been getting worse each day since. But um, yeah, if I just go slow and steady. Cute, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> okay. Video soon.
page 38. Still really, really enjoying it. Um, but I think I'm going to put it aside for a bit. And uh, maybe make some dinner or something. My knee has got like so much worse. Like it's like literally just like throbbing constantly. And it's just like... Anyways, hello. So I think I'm just gonna live, watch some YouTube, have a sandwich, listen to some songs or whatever, and try and do some reviews at the moment. And then I'll get back to reading later in the day. When you're trying to revise or read or relax or do things, I love putting on these like instrumental Taylor Swift things. I love them, they're like so calming. Just get in the zone. I'm just trying to bang out as many reviews as I can today um, because, like, I've been doing them for like the past two weeks on and off. But before then, I hadn't have done any since January, so I've still got like loads to catch up on. Um, so I'm trying to do that. Obviously, it's not related to this video, but it's just like a general sit down sort of vloggy one. So I'm just telling you about what I'm doing on the days that I am doing it so yeah so i got to page 84 today i uh, still really enjoying this um it's just it seems a little bit like i love it when i'm reading and like i'm getting like readability and it's just like nice and cozy and like the characters but it's just seeming like slow to get through a little bit and i don't know why like it just feels a bit strange but um yeah my knee is still really acting up like it's just like oh like the whole time but um yeah i'm gonna put this away go to sleep because it's like 1am and i shall see you in the morrow <laughs> So I just finished this um, I had about had like about 12-ish pages left and I was like you know what I'm just gonna finish in bed um, with some water for getting cold <laughs> um, but I have a really really bad migraine at the moment so I'm gonna talk to you in the morning about how I felt about this book um, it's really really good but I don't know fully um, yet I really really enjoyed this book uh, it's not a five stars I think it's the same 4.5 as the previous book um i did really enjoy this and i loved like the way it spoke about books i also read a few quotes um and like the relationships people have and the way like things will like fit into place even though it's not the way you like expected or had planned um there's just a little like a few plot points and like not really all that well-rounded as i was maybe hoping it to be but um still really really enjoy reading this it's such a lovely calming book um and you just want to be immersed in this world and with these characters and it's just written really well um and it just like brings you in into like coziness and um yeah so i would really 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 recommend this book um it's just not another five stars but um a few quotes i thought i'd quickly read out um they're not like spoilery ones there's a bit when um she's talking with her uncle um, so if you think about it, most of the authors of the books here are no longer alive. It's a little bit strange, don't you think? Their books are still with us and we read them to this day and we feel moved by them. So many of the people whose names line the shelves here had no longer left uh, world behind. When I thought about it, I started to feel close to tears again. You're right. The way they shape their feelings made them last. It's amazing, isn't it? And it's not just writers. All artists are incredible. We can learn so much from the work passed down to us from our ancestors. That was good um about how like your stories can live on if um you know you immortalize them down uh, this is when she's thinking about the Marcy bookshop uh, there are places i wanted to go and people i wanted to see and there was a place that was always ready to welcome me back i can't think of anything more wonderful than that um and it's just oh it's just so like heartwarming like this she has this place in the bookshop and this uncle that she didn't really know before and um 
they've become so important to her from sort of like a fluke sort of moment and leading on from that is a quote like later on first went to my uncle's bookshop i never dreamed i'd meet all these people if not for my pathetic broken heart i never would have come to the mariseke bookshop and i would still be estranged from my uncle and i um, thinking about it made me feel strange. It was all interconnected and now we were walking side by side along the streets of Jimbocho at night. Um, and there's a little bit after. Um, sharing your thoughts with someone seems so simple, but at times it can be surprisingly difficult, even more so when it's someone you care so much for. That's what I thought about as I walked next to him. But if you find the courage to do it, it will bring you closer together. Um, and then a final little quote, just a little bit backwards. Um, and I was just like, I get this so much. She's talking to her friend um, who says, when I'm sad, I read. I can go on reading for hours. Reading quiets the turmoil I feel inside and brings me peace. Because when I'm immersed in the world of a book, no one can get hurt. And yeah, I thought that bit was really, really nice and so relatable as well. So yeah, really, really good book. Um, so so recommend it it's so calming it was just a lovely reading experience um but it just didn't have that final clench to get it a full five star rating but we move <laughs> Glossy eyes, sometimes mean tears, sometimes means five stars. Hello everybody. <laughs> um, so 14 days, I've got to page 122. I'm just going to get to the end of this chapter on page 130. And you'll probably go to bed, uh, well soon anyway. But um, I'm still really, really enjoying this. It's just about, you know... Wait, I haven't spoken to you about this because that was in the previous video, but... It's basically these people in an apartment building in New York um, drawn like lo lockdown in COVID times um, and it's just set drawn 14 days and they all like go onto the rooftop and they start um, sharing stories like personal ones and they sort of like have like a thread between the ones and sort of and um, we're just letting them tell the story and then a few like reactions and some other things going on it's from the point of view of the super intendant i think or something like that um she is um only recently came there um her father who has dementia is in a nursing home somewhere like i think it's like upstate new york um and she can't like get through to them at all and uh, it's just about like the growing number of cases and like the dire situation in New York City and how like it was hit so bad like the strangeness of Covid times and lockdown and yeah it's like very like stressful but um like it is like done so well and it's like a time capsule for this really unique period of history um that obviously we lived through and um i just think it's done so well um it's getting a little bit like repetitive in a sense that like oh yes good does anyone else know a story i have one that's like this da, 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 like that. but at the same time that is basically what it is um and like it it can't really do it any differently so it's not like nearly negative it's just um something that you can pick up on that like it's going a bit it's sort of like short stories but they're all sort of connected in a way um and yeah i'm really really enjoying this um it's by all these people by the way and edited by margaret atwood and douglas preston um but when it gets to the end i'm gonna go to sleep well soon but um i made this today um <laughs> i don't know what it is it's um i followed a cake recipe um this vegan chocolate cake and I um, saw that I had coconut flour that was going out of date in a month or two. So I was like, you know what? Let's be a little bit different, you know? Let's let's change it up. And I was probably going to substitute this coconut flour for original flour um, in a recipe for a cake or something anyway. So I would have made this mistake. But um, I just subbed it. And um, I was mixing it and I was like, this is so dry. Like, what have I created here? So I basically added nearly the rest of the, like, a milk carton, soy milk carton. And um, it just 
was not like cake batter so I was like I don't know what this is it's all like meatloaf texture <laughs> um I would go as far to say that I created a new substance um proudly I don't think so but um some of the best inventions were mistakes so there's that uh it tastes nice the texture is I don't know it's, it's very like dry like it, but it's also moist like it, it looks a bit moist but it's like really weird and crumbly but um anyway I made this thing um i am gonna have that maybe watch a bit and then just finish those last seven pages and then i shall go to sleep and check in with you in the morrow so see you then people good evening the next day um <laughs> but i got to page 170 of 14 days absolutely loving this um this is so so good i just love all these stories and like it's just really fun um but they like they have a meaning to them as well and it's just um interesting and they're very diverse i did actually finish another book um which i started last night like at like 2 a.m or something because so i couldn't sleep um and that was cherry magic uh, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard by Yu Toyota and it is translated from Japanese by Taylor Engel. Volume 1, very, very slim. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I think I'm going to settle on maybe like a 4 star rating for this one anyway. But the series does actually have the potential to be a 5 stars. Um, it's basically following um, Adachi and Kurosawa. And Adachi um, if learns that he can hear um like people's like inner thoughts when he touches them um and kurosawa touches him and he finds out that he likes him like fancies him and um they're both guys and they like it's at work and he's sort of like the hot guy but he doesn't know like, how to feel and it's sort of about like um trying to navigate this guy's feelings for him that he doesn't know if they're reciprocate if he if he reciprocates them um and it's just like fun and it's so so adorable and they're so cute i'm just like they better get together because they're just so damn cute and um yeah and i just like that it's about like two like 30 year olds which you don't really see that often in sort of high literature and especially manga and queer manga it's mostly sort of like younger guys um but yeah this is fun and cute and i cannot wait to continue the series um so i will definitely do it that soon so yeah, anyway um i'm really really hot so i just had the fan on um i think i'm gonna watch um something on my laptop and make a coffee and then probably settle because it's about like 1 30 a.m um yeah i know i don't sleep my sleep plan is so so bad but anyway i'm gonna go make a coffee now and i shall see you tomorrow i don't know when but maybe in the morning <laughs> we shall see if you watched the last installment of this series um i talked about my e amazon account not to getting hacked but like someone was using my card to like buy things on amazon like prime memberships um and i had to like we'll go for the bank and everything i was like the struggle um guess what i found out today <laughs> so my sister messaged me and she's like did you post something on facebook i'm like well no i haven't used facebook in like what four years or something um and she sends me a screenshot obviously coming from my account and i'm like well that ain't me so i am like instantly just like oh Seriously, I'm just not, like, the past few days have been really shit in my brain. Um, so I keep looking up, there's, like, a moth in the room, but besides the point. Anywho, um, so I'm trying to get back onto Facebook, and they're all just, like, this email sent with this account, we can't find one, neither is this phone number. So I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on here. Um, it's still, like, my profile and everything. I can't go through it. I've just, like, gone through, like, those different steps, and it's so hard. Like, it's so much, like, red tape. Like, it tells you to do this, do that, and then you go back, and, like, it's always just the most stressful thing ever. I just, <clears throat> Facebook, like, what is up with this? Um... And then I'm trying to do something, it's like you have to like confirm something on your email. So I go to my email and like, I've been logged out of my email, so I'm like, okay. And it says like, oh, they suspect some suspicious activity on it. Um, so I'm like, what? <laughs> seriously? Seriously, I cannot be doing this. Um, so I'm going through all these like things, like trying to recover the account. Like the, like, the thing that has up there on my like other email address is that some old one I haven't used in like years and years and years. So I have to keep like, trying a new one, like do something, you have to like say like who you last emailed and things, and the subtitle, not the subtitles, the subject i'm like how am i supposed to remember i don't like really email people i just get the email or i like, sign up for like things and stuff i use my uni email for that, <sighs> this is just a venting session i'll probably speed this up because it's just it's not important but it is important like it's just so frustrating i just want to get on my chest you know but anyway um i think i feel things and then they say like oh you've been blocked because you don't provide enough information i'm like 
So I sort of like went back. I tried to like look on my iPhone like to see if I could change like how far back it can send like ones I've sent out. I was only able to get two on there, um, but that had like logged me out of sending. It only had the ones I already had on there, which was a bit weird. But um, cut long story short, I was finally able to get back in after like waiting for ages and stuff. And then I'm looking at all my emails and like ones have been deleted saying that there's been strange activity, someone's logged into it. One from like Vietnam, I believe, and the other one from Ireland, like about five minutes apart, and they've been deleted from the account, like the email. So I like recovered them and put them back in the thing, um, in case I need to like do another I'm not sure. Um, and then afterwards it said like things on Facebook saying that someone's added an email address to your Facebook account. This one, like it's email and it's in Oslo. Okay, um, or Stockholm, I can't remember, either, one of them. Um, and then, like, two emails after that, it says, your email address, my one, has been removed from the account, and the other one, your, your phone number has been removed from the account, so they literally just, like, taking over my account, that basically. Um, and I can't also change the security details on the email about, like, trying to add the, the actual new recovery one that I have, like, as an alternative one. And Facebook is just being so annoying, I just cannot get onto it, but whatever um i had about two panic attacks and i had one yesterday as well that's unrelated um i feel like this thing has been really building up which has been really 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 terrible but anyway i had um some movie therapy i guess i watched the lion king and bed on some broomsticks two of my ultimate like favorite childhood films i used to remember watching like so often um which was really nice um a bit stressful i also ate a lot because when i get stressed and sad and depressed i eat a lot we get standing sort of spiraling because i feel shit about eating but why am i saying all this <laughs> anyway um i'm gonna get back to 14 days a bit looking around some charity shops and stuff I went to the one here um I got two which I was holding in the previous clip but um they had like actually quite a lot here they had a new before the coffee get cold one in there um and it was signed as well which I was thinking of but I was like I haven't read the other ones and I've got two of them now so I should read it first and see if I actually like the series before I actually buy any more um, I also had like a few other ones on the new hardbacks um, but yeah I got two one was three pound one was two pound I was thinking of leaving the menstrual time because I wasn't like I didn't know if I was gonna love it but I've read a few reviews and some people say it's a little bit like Babel and um, it's very like interesting and it does sound really really interesting um, it's just not really my typical genre like type of one but yeah and then the other one is by Kerry Andrew is um, their new book that came out like literally this year so in the ministry of time um, and I read their other book like earlier in the year John the Trans was really fun and really really loved it so hopefully this is as well and that my previous one was 4.75 stars this one might get a 5 we shall see so yeah uh, I'm just sat here now just um, relaxing and then I'll be going home I just finished 14 days really really enjoyed it um but it's like 2 a.m so i'm going to sleep now and tell you more about my thoughts tomorrow and what rating it got i'm still not too sure um but i will say read it it is really really good so let's see so 14 days um I still am not 100% on what rate I'm going to give this. At the moment, I'm going to say a 4.25. So ambitious in how it has put all these authors' works together to create a collaborative novel and one that does flow and um, it has a clear, you know, timeline and the way it moves on. Um, and it is very clever. Um, but in the some sense of the short story collection some were obviously better than others some a little bit too dense others maybe wanted to be a bit more embellished um but on the whole i think the way it was compiled and the way it's written is very good um and at the end it talks about all the collaborators um about just like what the story they added to and a bit about like what they've also created um and a few of them i do actually want to check out more by so it was quite good to you know get you introduced to some of these authors that you might not have known what i found surprising is that margaret atwood although like editing it um her story was actually 
probably the worst um and it was like very short um and also it says that douglas douglas preston he is the one that actually had like the main sort of like super the main characters like narrative and did quite a few more stories um and i know that i thought it was maybe a bit more together or maybe possibly more her um and yeah but um this was enjoyable i did like the way they all had their own sort of stories in a way it's always about like life and people and like connections and like also contemporary issues and historical ones that have still continued to today's society in america um dealing with like racism and like xenophobia and queerness to an extent and being a woman and um yeah i thought it was very very good and i would so 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 recommend it um and i just have a few quotes i just thought i'd show to you um one is like a woman's telling a story about an ape when actually created we all start off as an empty bolt of fabric and it's our job to turn ourselves into something meaningful or useful or beautiful or original it took me a very long time to do that i never came to love this apron but i've held on to it for all these decades i kept it because in an odd way i like to be reminded of myself when i was still uniformed yeah that was good um and then also this one's near the end um which i thought was very good i like this story that was put here and um the, like the impact it had on like the characters and their other conversations from it the character rambo said uh, that attic room was jam-packed with, with the stories of forgotten people whose lives were shoved into boxes and dumped there to be chewed up by rats. Um, you know what's even more frightening than death? He paused, being forgotten. Uh, a bit further on, um, I've often thought about the process of being forgotten, Rambo said. First you die, then the people who knew you and can tell your stories die, then those people die. When your stories die with them, that's when you're finally and truly gone yeah but, um it's about you know how your stories can live on for only so long um in some ways and i do think this book does a very good job of exploring storytelling and the power of stories and people's lives and the fact that they, they should be shared to you know impact other people and how that impacts do work so yeah, would really, really recommend this. Not a five star though. Um, and now I don't know what I'm going to do because I thought this video is quite long. I don't want to do another part, but I shall see. I'll come back to you for the finale possibly or another book. Soon. I think I mentioned this, but also like the way it talks about like the pandemic and like banging pots and the scariness of the time and the numbers and the growing cases and how like you sort of get de desensitized as the days gone on um to the numbers and just like it's a really good time capsule for time in lockdown um and it like made me like have flashbacks in a way and just like thoughts and like yeah it's very like of its time and i think it does that really really well um and just a little extra note one more final note um i did also find that towards the end of the book um well right at the end actually it was a little bit rushed i would say and um i thought there's like a twist that i did really like um but had it maybe came a little bit earlier and more had like a bit more to say afterwards it would have had a bit more of an impact and would have been a bit more better but um that's just for another final little note maybe i don't know what i have more to say <laughs>
few updates I thought I'd show. Um, the other day I finished um, Cherry Magic Volume 2. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it the same four star rating. This is that uh, they're going on a work like overnight trip and we're just following the two characters and like growing feelings. And um, yeah, it's just really, really cute. So I recommend. Can I wait to continue? Um, and I have also just read the first chapter of Volume Three, um, and now they're sort of like put together in a way, and um, it's still more about like feelings and things. But I hope to finish that and things. Um, also, ones I haven't actually talked to you about is that I've read a few more of the Welsh fairy tales, Myths and Legends by Claire Fayers. I've been reading this on and off for like a, like a few months now, I think. Um, but I, yeah, these are fun. Um, most of them I'm given about like a three-ish star rating because they're very, very quick and um, it doesn't really allow that much storytelling and things to go on. But um it's fun um and i also i think did i say this or not but i started a little bit of woman's law by sarah clegg uh this i'm only on page like 22 because i got it when i was out but i forgot to bring a book with me so i went to cherry shop and i saw it. it's almost it was only 50p it looks really cute nice interesting um and it's sort of about like the myth of like serpents and mermaids and like lilith and other people throughout um history and uh lots of different like cultures and how they sort of like then like one that led on to the other um but yeah that's fun so but i did end up finishing that. volume three of train magic um and i enjoyed this a lot um i'm gonna give this 3.75 stars so the other two have been four um i still really enjoyed it and i would so so recommend it obviously part of the series um it is i've didn't know if I loved it as much um but I still really really want to continue the series I haven't got any of the other ones physically yet and I do want to read it physically so I'm gonna wait until I can procure them is that the right word I don't know but um yeah I do can't really say that much about it without you know like having spoilers but we do learn more about um their like younger employee in this book I've sort of forgotten his name, which is kind of bad, but, um, Rokaku, and, um, like, who he is, and sort of things, and, yeah, cute and fun. Um, and I did finish also Welsh Fairy Tales, Myths and Legends. Um, all of the stories is 19 in total. Um, the average rating came to just over a three, so I'm probably gonna give it a three star rating. Well, I mean, that sounds fit. Um, it's a little bit of shame. I do wish like they had been more in depth and was able to like more like grapple with the stories and what was like like the messages and things, but it is aimed at and meant for children, and that is the reason why it is written in that certain way and told like that. Um but yeah, I would recommend it and it was fun. Um, there is also an Irish and Scottish like version by two different authors, um, which I might possibly check out if I find them, because um, it's just nice like little nitbits. Um, and um, I would recommend it. So that was that. Hey. So I've had a very long day, <laughs> very bad day as well, but how it goes now but anyway uh i thought i'd come in the park it's so hot today wow oh sorry um just gonna sit for a bit um i'm in richmond park again which i've taken to before um it's really really massive i thought i'd get my heavy bag but i just thought i'd come and um get away from for I'm in the sun, got my sunnies on, um, and I have started reading this today, Sunburn by Chloe and Michelle Howarth. I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, it's an Irish book. It's following Lucy, and I think she's about like 15. It's set in like the early 90s um, in a small town in Ireland. She, she is starting to have feelings for one of her female friends, Susanna, and um, and it's sort of like a very like small conservative religious town where all the women just like grow up to be like their mothers and all the the boys um grow up to be like their dads and they just sort of replace that generation and that's just how it's been going on for like all the time they're like 
don't really disrupt it, the, the system basically. And obviously if she doesn't really have feelings for boys, how is she gonna really take this role as a mother and like a family like woman? Um, and also everyone like thinks that she should just be like with her like childhood friend Martin and I believe he does too. I've only like got to page 36 so I'm only a little bit in but um, I'm just reading from the back because um, yeah. Um, but yeah it sounds really really good. Um, but I do one thing that does a little bit irritate me is that the text is always on sort of like a different line and then it before or after it says so and so said this and things and it just i don't know it probably just breaks it up a bit because it doesn't like flow properly but yeah we enjoy it some of the names i'm gonna butcher if i try and pronounce them so i'm gonna have to try and find a way to um learn the proper pronunciations because um obviously they're they're like using the irish alphabet and i don't know how to like read it properly so but yeah we are enjoying this i might sit and read for a bit i don't know how long because it's very hot but um i might just sit away and see so yeah see you soon. by the way i don't know if it comes very good because obviously i'm wearing glasses at the moment but yeah fun book time yeah, for a little bit of a walk that's like the view can you see it or is it not that good i don't know but um I am really really loving this book like the way it just like talks about things and it's like very literary and like I've missed Irish literature I haven't read it for a while which is weird because I usually really like it um but yeah it's just really good about how like just talking about a person and their life and like how they interact and how like it's all going and stuff and yeah I'm really really enjoying it so far so possibly a five star Maybe, hopefully, please, please, let me. update so with sunburn i'm on to page 86 now um, i'm still enjoying it i haven't wanted to pick it up for a while um which is a little bit of a shame uh, it's actually been quite long this video has been going on for so so long um, and then also i went back to reading some more of straight jacket by matthew todd um this is what i've been reading since the start of june um uh, for reference it's currently the 6th of august now i can't remember when i started this video it was like early into july um and i've been on and off reading this um it's because my loan expired for the audiobook um but i thought i'd had to read it in between before it, it finished um and i did get quite a big chunk of it done um and then uh when it went off nobody wanted it anyway so i just re got it but i just haven't picked it up yet um but this is about it's a non-fiction book about like the legacy of gay shame and about like like history sort of like very like U uk centric and um how like different things put the like mostly gay male into a specific like box and um the way like we deal with like shame for different things and um and like how we move try and move on and like different things that we face like mental health problems and addiction and um like lots of different things it's getting a little bit repetitive but it is very like informative and like you use different like case studies different interviews and um also like personal stories as well by todd um and yeah i'm enjoying this despite the like quite bleak at times um 
content of it um but yeah i do want to get back to that um and i've also finished a very easy death which i started um i enjoyed this for well i don't know if i say enjoy it per se i feel like this took me so long to get through like it wasn't like that long i think it was maybe like about five or six days <laughs> but it is tiny um it's just it's just very dense and it wasn't like necessarily flowing as much as i expected L earlier in the year i read inseparables by simone de beauvoir um and i adored it it was so so good so well written just amazing um i gave that five stars uh it might have been the last one i gave five stars to I'm not sure. Um, so I picked up A Very Easy Death by her. It is translated from French by Patrick O'Brien. Um, and this volume by the Fitzcarraldo editions also has an introduction by Ali Smith that I read after the book. Um, and it's basically little, like, notes, I guess, um, when her mother was, um, like, told she had a cancer diagnosis. Well, she was actually told, but, like, she simone was told um and the mother's sort of like journey to death and like her relationship with her mother and thinking back and stuff i feel like i wish it had more of the thinking back parts and about how she like interacted with her mother i, I believe that is actually this content is in other books by her i believe a dutiful daughter is the one that mostly has her relationship with her mother in um this is more just about like the end of her mother's life and obviously that is what it is but there's a little bit where she does actually talk back um about how her mother sort of like left the life that she might have wanted to have for her family and children and um how she was quite like possessive and controlling in some sense about um like in, in her in simone's and her sister pet's adolescence um and just like yeah it's like quite good at exploring grief beforehand and also after the death of that particular person and um, there are some quotes and stuff um but i just haven't had the time to actually go through and write them out yet but um i think i'm gonna give this maybe a 3.5 um i wouldn't i would recommend it but i just didn't like love it and uh, it just felt quite difficult to get through at times um but i do really really want to read more by de beauvoir because inseparables was amazing uh so yeah i don't have any more updates for now <laughs> gosh it's been going on for so long um i thought it was gonna be a five star so i was like i'm just gonna quickly get this in finish it but alas it wasn't see ya sometime. hey everybody i read a bit more of straight jacket i think this is really really done well um i'm predicting it's going to be a five star i don't know if it will be a full blown one or i will just put it on good reasons one and in reality it's a 4.5 or 4.75 but for what it is i think it's doing it done really 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 well and um it's unique and important and i would so so recommend it and we're like halfway through uh but i need to get a video up because it's been going on for so so long now so i'm gonna say bye for now um i really hope you enjoyed today's video um it's been a bit of a mess not what i planned but we move um and i shall see you very soon have a nice morning night wherever you are in the world everybody bye